Control of the Mediterranean Sea requires control of one island, Cyprus. Learn how Cyprus is being ruled by Germany and the impact this will soon have on the entire world. Next, on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. In 1980, Herbert W. Armstrong, the head of the Worldwide Church of God, visited the little island of Cyprus in the Mediterranean Sea. And he was invited there by the leader of that country. And Mr. Armstrong talked to the leader about the Holy Roman Empire about to come on the scene. And it was going to absolutely dominate and even domineer the European scene and uh, the Western world and uh, other parts of the world. It was going to be a superpower. And this was uh, kind of astounding to the leader in Cyprus. If you know the history in the past, well, less than 2,000 years, the uh, Germans have uh, led most of the heads of the Holy Roman Empire. Now today, Germany literally is the sovereign country in, of Cyprus. It rules that little island. And how did that all happen? Just 27 years after Mr. Armstrong told this man, the leader, that the Holy Roman Empire was going to uh, take over Europe. Now Germany is going to be the military head of that empire. The, the real power is going to be there. But you and I need to, under, to, to understand why this is happening. Why does everybody have such passion to get control of Cyprus? Britain has two huge bases there, takes up about 3% of the country, and yet the uh, nation that's really been controlling that has been the United States. But now Britain, is, of course, is coming out of the uh, European Union, which means they're going to lose that control of those bases, and which means also that America is going to be pushed out in just a matter of time. And Europe keeps rising. Germany keeps rising and leading Europe, and is going to lead the Holy Roman Empire with its uh, powerful nation. And it will be a church-state combine. It is called the Holy Roman Empire. But here is Russia even tried to get control of the little country of Cyprus, that little island, through their business and loans and that type of thing. They tried to get control of Cyprus themselves. They, of course, have a naval base in Syria. So that's very important for them to be in that part of the world. But Germany was able to block them and early on made Cyprus a member very quickly of the uh, European Union. And some terrible things began to happen in Cyprus, and Germany was able to get control of this very strategic island. Now, we have a booklet on the Holy Roman Empire, a large booklet, that we will offer you at the end of this program and give you the whole history of this Holy Roman Empire and why so many nations are passionately trying to get control of Cyprus and Syria and other, other nations in the Middle East. And I want to talk to you today about how Germany conquers Cyprus. Here is a comment we made in the Trumpet.com, June 2, 2010. Cyprus, an EU member nation, has been pivotal in geopolitics for millennia. I mean, for thousands of years. Well, how, how can that be? Well, this is, uh, he's talking mainly about the Holy Roman Empire. Then it goes on to say, it continues to be of great importance for a variety of strategic reasons to the European Union as a base for the future projection of European power into the Holy Land, Middle East, and Persian Gulf. Both Rome and Berlin the main drivers behind the EU expansionist vision understand the vital geostrategic position of Cyprus as a 
Christian military outpost and a key seagate within the Islamic Middle East arena. Now, as you probably know, Jerusalem is one of the most holy sites of Islam. It is also probably the holiest site of the uh, European Union, and you'll see that as they complete their formation. It's going to be pared down considerably, but the heart and core of that Holy Roman Empire is Germany and Rome. And here we are, they're talking about, we're, we're talking about Germany or, or, or Rome and uh, Berlin. So if you think about the proximity of Cyprus to uh, all of these strategic areas in the Middle East, you begin to understand why it is so important to these great powers of the world, as are other strategic nations and, and uh, gateways, waterways, that uh, where a lot of trade is uh, transpiring most of the time, just about every day. We go into here and it says the geostrategic position of Cyprus, located at the crossroads to the Aegean and Mediterranean seas and Suez, possessing good seaports. Notice this, possessing good seaports, airports, and radar surveillance systems to survey the skies across the Middle East, Persian Gulf, and North Africa makes it a great watching post. Well, and you know that that was built mainly by Britain and America. But this gives uh, anybody in Cyprus that has control of that country, gives them a, a monitor over all of Iran and North Africa, the entire Middle East. And it's a tremendous asset to anybody who wants to implement their power in the Middle East. And let me tell you, Germany is, has a supreme desire to do just that. I, talked last week about uh, Germany con uh, having a clash with the King of the South, which is Iran, and radical Islam, and Germany and uh, the Holy Roman Empire is the King of the North. I'll show you that again in a moment, but notice what it says here, Cyprus, and we wrote this uh, January 9th, several years ago, Cyprus is also a listening post from which to monitor electronic communication media, very helpful for signals intelligence, just the very best intelligence that is available. With the surveillance technology installed in Cyprus for decades, Britain has been able to share intelligence data with the United States and now, no doubt, with the EU as a member state. But Britain and America are about to be leaving. And here we see the Holy Roman Empire rising, Rome and Berlin, not Washington, D.C. and London, but we see the Holy Roman Empire coming on the scene exactly the way that Herbert W. Armstrong said it would. And 27 years later, we see all this happening. And, and he prophesied it to the leader of Cyprus, or the, certainly the acting leader at, at that time. And we wrote in uh, Cyprus Surrenders to Germany, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but it says, If America lost access to the British bases there and their radar and signal intelligence, it would pose a threat to our national security interest in the eastern Mediterranean, the embassy said, now, you see, that's not a small matter, is it? It's a, actually damaging our national security. Now, there was a strategy consultant by the name of Aris Patasis, and he said it's a misnomer to think of these two huge bases on Cyprus as being belonging to Britain. He said, for several years, all of it has been in control of America. Soon they're going to lose that, and that's going to diminish America's power and intelligence in the Middle East in an enormous way. And it's going to enhance that of Germany and Italy a great deal more. You know that with uh, 
Britain now pulling out of the European Union. It's called Brexit today. The, uh, there is a reason why. There's a reason why they're pulling out. They see what, what is happening, and they see this Holy Roman Empire rising, and, and that is not uh, the freedom that they've always had. And they know it's a dictatorial, German-led, powerful entity in Europe. And we, we need to understand that because it is fulfilling a great Bible prophecy. And I'm telling you, when this all is totally formed, and it's very near that right now, this world is going to be shocked. But I'll tell you some people that are not going to be shocked, and that is th this little church that has been teaching this for over 70 years. And it's not going to be shocking to our people at all. It's, but we see all of these prophecies about the Holy Roman Empire spreading uh, or growing like a wildfire, uh, just raging and, uh, and continually getting more powerful. But Cyprus got into a very serious debt problem, which the U.S. has as well, and, it, and they, they were just bankrupt. And so they had to be bailed out. Now that's a lot of money, and Germany was about the only one that could really do that the way it needed to be done. They had the power, they had the money to do that, of all things. They are much more powerful financially than America, believe me, and Britain. They really are. But uh, even though Germany was able to block Russia, they still had to uh, make that nation pay a pretty good percentage of that bailout themselves. That is, the, the very people who had money in the bank. And you could say, well, the nation sort of came kicking and screaming, but they had to take Germany's deal or go totally bankrupt. And Germany took over, and the, the demand of Germany was that they were going to be the sovereign power in that little island that little strategic island. And Germany has been planning this for a long time. Just to try to get the importance of this, it's, it again is another stunning statement, and I'll read it to you, and uh, it's from the same article I've been reading from. Remember, from the start, the Euro was designed to fail in this way. A common currency within a common government is an unstable halfway point on the way to becoming a superstate. Ordinary Europeans did not want to become part of a superstate, so the EU elites set up the Euro knowing that it, for it to work, the EU must complete the journey. Europeans would be forced against their will into a political union. Now, we can better see why uh, Britain is pulling out of this European Union. They see where it's headed. And it's, there have been six heads to this Holy Roman Empire. And it, feel, it has and just routinely filled Europe with blood in all of those six heads. And many of them just converting people to their religion. Terrible, terrible violence. Now, Mr. Armstrong visited this little island in uh, 1980. He understood the problems of uh, Cyprus and had talked to the uh, president and leader about those problems in his country. And then here's what we wrote about what he said. Let me just quote our article way back in uh, 2013. Discussion then centered upon the biblically prophesied seventh resurrection of the medieval Holy Roman Empire combining both church and state in Europe, dominating the world. See, this, is, this was a warning. This was a warning to that man, and of course, he's responsible for getting the message to his people. But Mr. Armstrong made that, a, that leader aware and, and gave him a, a great warning 
But what was coming, and he needed to be, needed to be aware of it, he needed to be getting his country to seek God and understand what is really happening in Europe and in his nation. But leaders don't usually do that. But I'll tell you, there's been more than one crusade launched from the little island of Cyprus. It has launched several crusades, and there's going to be one more crusade one last head of the Holy Roman Empire that is going to launch an attack on Jerusalem. If they don't wake up, and Britain and America don't wake up to what's really happening in Europe and in this world and in their own nations, and why their problems are so enormous, and as Europe rises under the leadership of Germany, America and Britain are not doing so well. Uh, overall, America has a $22 trillion debt that is just so enormous that you can't even fathom how, you, how people could ever get that under control living in a democracy. And we need help from God. That's what God is trying to tell us. We need help from God. I'm telling you, this has been going on with the European Union for close to three, well, 1,500 years. A long time for those seven holy Roman empires. And yet, very few people know much about that at all. They don't know what this holy Roman empire is all about. Just a few years ago, Germany recognized, first of all, Croatia which really, at that very time, had a leader who, who uh, admitted that he was a Nazi or believed in the Nazi cause in World War II. And Germany recognized that nation. That ought to be, have awakened a lot of people to what was going on in Germany, because remember, they started two world wars and have been a militaristic nation throughout their history. And that's not so hard to, to prove, but they also recognized Slovenia, which was allied with them in World War II. And uh, at the same time, that, that caused a civil war to break out, so those two nations could break away from the Serbs or the former Yugoslavia, which was a powerful ally of America and Britain in World War II. And the whole Western world was against what Germany was doing. All of Europe in America. And Germany said, we're going to go ahead with it, and began to put the pressure on everybody, financially in some ways, or threat, threatening them, just breaking up the European Union. And they all caved, and America caved, and finally, the Germany even persuaded America to provide the, uh, the power to uh, conquer the Balkans, and that included the Serbs who had been our great allies in World War II, and Germany our worst enemy. Does that make sense? Now Germany controls the Balkans and that wonderful warm water sea that comes out of that, the Balkans into the Mediterranean, and then it all leads right, into, right on into Cyprus when you go through the Mediterranean Sea. But this is all now absolutely ruled by Germany. They control that, the Balkans. And the one nation they feared most was that of the Serbs or the former Yugoslavia, because they caused them so many problems in World War II. But here, here we have now America going along with all this. and. Uh, America and Britain had promised that they would now never allow Germany to rise up like that again after World War II. They wouldn't allow them to have all those armaments so they could cause another war, but, well, they've let that go by the wayside. Cyprus also has a lot of shipping industries, and you can, this quote from the Trumpet Magazine, July 26, 2011, says there is especially close cooperation between Cyprus and Germany in the shipping sector. Many German shipping companies and shipping management businesses are based in uh, Limassol in Cyprus. 
So anyhow, we have this uh, history of the Balkans repeating itself, just like the old Holy Roman Empire, and uh, the same with Cyprus. But let me just quickly read to you. Well, I'll just paraphrase it. Uh, this I gave it to you last week, but it talks about the King of the North and the King of the South. The King of the North is Germany and the Holy Roman Empire, and the King of the South is Iran and radical Islam, and they're going to clash. And Germany and the Holy Roman Empire are going to win. And I showed you how they were going to win. And then after that, they, uh, that, that power enters into the Glorious Land, or Jerusalem, and, well, that's not good news. That's not good news. But uh, then, uh, then after they uh, really were getting into their power, it says in verse 44, But tidings out of the east and the north shall trouble him. That is the Holy Roman Empire. And it, that's north and the east would be Russia and China and their allies. This Russia-China axis and Europe, they are troubled by what is, what is beginning to happen in China and Russia, and they're preparing for war. And then it says in verse 45, And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain, yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. Well, how about that? A significant part of Europe is going to move its, move, uh, it, well, let's say its, its headquarters into Jerusalem. Now, that must mean they have a quite a lot of power there, and you know what's going to stop them? The Messiah is coming, and He's going to stop them Himself. Those very nations that I'm talking about today, He is going to destroy all of them. All of them. The, one of the titles of the crown of Charlemagne that everybody's talking about is the King of Jerusalem. This, this king that's going to be this, this strong man that's going to come on the scene, and Daniel 8 and verse 23 talks about that happening in the latter time. A fierce countenance this king has, and he has uh, dark sentences, which means uh, uh, there's an evil spirit working there, and, and uh, that's what this king is doing. He's going to be destroying a lot of nations. It's a, it's a terrible violence that's coming. This is all explained in our booklet on Daniel Unsealed at Last. Daniel is only for this end time, and no other time. It says that in Daniel 12 and verse 4 and verse 9. It's only for this, this time. And today we have a very weak leader in Germany, Angela Merkel. When you consider the power and the rising up of the Holy Roman Empire, even under her regime, you have to wonder, well, what's going to happen when their strong man comes on the scene? And he will, because it's prophesied just like the rest of the Holy Roman Empire. And it'll come to pass. And it says, His power shall be mighty, and goes on to verse 25 and says that, uh, well, He's going to destroy a lot Himself, but He's going to be destroyed by the prince of princes, and He shall be broken without hand. That means God is going to destroy the Holy Roman Empire forever. The Messiah is coming to do just that. Now, how, how is it that a man like Herbert W. Armstrong to, could go to Cyprus and tell this leader that the Holy Roman Empire is going to come on the scene and it's going to dominate Europe, and it's already doing that even though, though it's not fully formed. It's dominating Europe. And there are hundreds of prophecies that we have delivered, hundreds of them, in uh, some 70 years, and they have all come to pass. They've all come to pass. And now, one more is going to come to pass, and that is the coming of the Messiah. And He's going to destroy the Holy Roman Empire forever, and the powers of Russia and China, and all the evil powers of this world, and He's going to be bringing peace and joy to this world, and even the whole universe, forever and ever and ever. What wonderful news that is! Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends! Request our book, The Holy Roman Empire in Prophecy, to prove that this church-state combine will precede Christ's return. 
also request Daniel Unsealed at Last and How Germany Ambushed Cyprus. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.